Hello my fellow MCs, Primo here. With Jingle Yu being released about a week ago and rightfully getting high praise, the struggle for deciding on who to spend your Stellar Jade on is at an all-time high. Today, we are going over 5 factors that you may not have considered when deciding on whether to pull for Jing Liu or save for characters such as Topaz and Gwenefin. I know many will only focus on the numbers, but I feel there are many qualities and characteristics of a new unit that you may overlook when making a final decision. So let's sit back, grind some Stellar Jade, and let's talk about it. It's never too late to pick up the tab. Jing Liu is a follower of the Destruction Path and possesses the Ice Element, which gives her the advantage of being the first of her kind. Some immediate characters that come to mind that can take on her role as a main DPS are Blade, Don Hong Ayel, and Yan Qing. Blade and Don Hong Ayel both possess high damage capabilities through single and multi-target attacks, very similar to that of Jing Liu. All three units base their main damage output on an enhanced basic attack or skill giving all of them multiple facets of damage on top of their ultimate and follow-up capabilities. Yan Qing does not follow the destruction path, but does utilize the ice element to help break down enemy weaknesses. Although nowhere close to the same style of play as Jing Li Yu, if you find importance in not duplicating elements that have the same role, then you could possibly consider not pulling for Jing Li Yu. Topaz is the first 5 star to be a hunt character since Seal, and she also has the advantage of possessing the fire element. Because of this, her general pull value would be very high for those players that don't have a Himeko on their account or do not have hook built. With that being said, since she is a single target damage dealer, some units that could potentially replicate her role on your account are Seal, 4 star Don Hung, Su Shang, Himeko, and Hook. Seal is the best of the bunch here as a meta defining unit up until version 1.3 when characters like Blade and Don Hong Ayel were released. Seal still does enormous single target quantum damage to opponents and if you have her, you may want to be looking elsewhere to spend your Stellar Jade on. If you are considering just using 4 star Don Hung, Su Shang, or Hook as a replacement for Topaz, I would say steer on the side of caution. Topaz is a major upgrade to those characters, and if you did decide to skip out on Seal, I would say she has generally high pull value in that regard. Himeko, who I primarily see as a sub DPS with her follow-up attacks, still can do a job against enemies with a fire weakness. Although many in the community point to her as the worst standard 5-star character, she still is useful in some capacities, and I think it's fair to consider not pulling for Topaz if you have a belt Himeko. Gwenefin is a 4-star fire and agility unit that specializes in burn dot capabilities. If you run a Kafka dot team, the pull value here is sky high for a character of her capabilities. On the other side of the coin, her general pull value is just meh for those that don't run dot teams. An easy comparison for her is somebody like Luca who released on Kafka's banner. Also of the Nihility path, it's hard to argue a place for both Luca and Gwenefin in general team comps when a majority of their kit centralizes on burn and bleed damage. If you are somebody that hunts for 4 stars, I would say that she isn't your typical Nihility unit like Pila, Welt, etc. I would say she falls along the lines of Luka as a niche support unit for Kafka. It's never too late to pick up the tab. As I mentioned in my Jing Liu guide video, her kit definitely stands out with her talent as well as her enhanced skill. Ideally, you want to keep her uptime on her spectral transmigration state as much as possible to be able to reap the benefits of her crit rate and attack boost. Utilizing her non-enhanced skill and ultimate to gain stacks of Syzygy in order to enter this special state, she can do major multi-target damage to enemies if you are able to plan and sustain the uptime on her talent. A fallback to Jing Liu is that she drains the HP of her allies in order to attack while in the state, but this helps increase her attack stat, and in some instances helps other characters, with an example being Blade and his talent. In terms of skill point management, I wouldn't say she is skill point positive, but she is very skill point efficient, as she can utilize her enhanced skill without consuming a skill point. Topaz and Numbi's kit reminds me a lot of Jing Yuan and Himeko, but in a single target format. Her kit is centralized on Numbi doing follow up attacks on enemies that have been targeted with the proof of debt. Once an enemy has been marked with the proof of debt, which can be done through the use of her skill, this opens up major damage potential not only for herself, but other allies who utilize follow up attacks. Her main source of damage output is through her skill and Numbi's follow-up attacks, while her ultimate gives her a huge damage multiplier and crit damage increase as she enters the Windfall Bonanza state. What I find interesting about Topaz is that she is classified as a hunt character, but she does have support capabilities for those characters that like to focus on follow-up attacks in their kit, leading to some potential fun and amazing team comps. Like I mentioned earlier, Gwenefin's kit focuses on her burn damage potential and dot team comps. For herself, she can personally trigger burn through her skill, while her ultimate is able to trigger another proc of the enemy's burn status if the attack is landing on an enemy that has already been burned. 
An interesting part of her kit comes in the form of her talent, which applies Fire Kiss to an enemy after they have taken burn damage. This increases the damage taken from all enemy attacks by a certain percentage and can be stacked up to three times for three turns. Although nothing special and having similarities to Lucas' kit, she can be a very effective damage dealer in the right team comp. It's never too late to pick up the tab. Jing Liu's lore importance is quite high. I mean, her reveal in the last cutscene of the version 1.3 Trailblaze mission took my breath away with the animations and dark undertones of her entrance. Although she was Jing Yuan's mentor, it left so many questions regarding the future, especially since it seems like she's aligning herself with Locha. Considering the fact that, and I quote, her name has been wiped from the records and she is a traitor to the Shan Shou, walking on the fine line between sanity and Mara Struck. I am eager to see how her story develops and we can glimpse into her past life when she was a sword champion and admired ally. You can say that in comparison to Topaz and Gwenefin, she has and will have the biggest lore importance in terms of the main story. Topaz is the leader of the Special Debts Picket Team and high-level manager of the Strategic Investment Department under the Inter-Astral Peace Corporation. A member of the Ten Stonehearts at a young age, Topaz's foundational expertise is debt retrieval. Although not having a prominent role in any of the Trailblaze missions we have had so far, the new Trailblaze Continuance, Jurelo 6 Future Market, looks to shine some light on her role as well as her character overall. And at the very least, getting more screen time of Numbi is going to be a huge plus for all Trotter lovers. Gwenefin is a performance artist visiting the Shanshell Lao Fu. She's chasing a new life on the Lao Fu when not concerned with food and shelter. Ideally, she can get a companion mission in the future that can help immerse us in the curious character, but all I know is that if I see a Detain lookalike, I am already a fan. It's never too late to pick up the tab. I know aesthetics are more of a personal preference, so take this all with a grain of salt, as these are just my general observations and first reactions when seeing these characters. For Jing Liu, her design sits at the top of the tier list when it comes to elegance, power, and synergy. I am a huge fan of the different shades of blue on her outfit to symbolize her dealings with the ice element, as well as the hints of red scattered throughout her clothes leading up to those piercing ruby eyes. I think this contrast between her cold tone clothing but her warm eye color produce a character aesthetic that is both unsettling yet graceful. Obviously, the common anime trope of red eyes symbolizing demonic or monster-like traits or somebody that is very powerful gives users the notion that the character they are playing with isn't some run-of-the-mill basic unit. Overall, she comes across exactly how she is meant to be, which is refined but a little scary and I don't blame those that would solely pull on her based on aesthetics alone. Topaz and Numbi have some of my favorite designs in the game, and it has to do more with Numbi than anything else. I'd love when game developers can loop in other objects or animals into a character's design and make it work without hindering their personal aesthetic. In this case, Numbi's design is pretty good considering how it is personally used for Topaz's deck collection. Onto Topaz herself, in terms of her outfit, nothing really stands out to me personally. Don't get me wrong, it's a good design, but if you are comparing it to Jing Liu, I just see so much more character in that outfit while this one just seems alright. I think Numbi puts her character's aesthetic higher than average, but if you were to just take her design at base value, it doesn't wow me like Jing Liu. But of course, watch my opinion change as I make my way through the version 1.4 missions and I can guarantee that I'll look back at this take and cringe. Again, this is just an initial reaction based purely on pictures I've seen. Now many would probably say Gwenefin's design is boring and it's just your run-of-the-mill Zhen Cho character aesthetic. But for myself, I love the Chinese aesthetic that gets tied into her design and it primarily has to do with the colors of choice and the hair. The bright and vibrant orange and red really stand out and match with the little detings, making it a match made in heaven. I really like how the developers decide to do her hair as it's different, it's fun, but not over the top where it can be distracting. You can just take one look at her and know how carefree she is with her life. I also like how we got a glimpse into her lifestyle with this described for more light cone and knowing that she is a social media personality will always get a couple extra points in my book. Overall, if I had to rank and I know this is a hot take, we are going Jing Liu at 1, Gwenefin at 2, and Topaz at 3 in terms of character aesthetics. It's never too late to pick up the tab. For all of the meta enthusiasts who are watching this video, you'll be happy to know that Jing Liu easily slots into the SS tier, right next to characters like Blade and Don Hong Ael. She does have the benefit of being the first limited ICE DPS character to be released, but regardless, she has shown through her damage output as well as team synergies that she can be a top tier option for any account.
Her multiplies are solid, her traces are relevant for a DPS, and the skill point efficiency helps bring in more skill hungry supports to help further enhance her damage. Overall, there is no question that Jing Liu is a top tier unit and will be meta defining for a while, at least until the next destruction DPS comes along. For Topaz, she's in a weird spot here, at least for me personally. On one hand, she's the first fire hunt DPS, giving her the advantage of being the first of her kind. But the thing that has me stumped is the follow up attack focus on her kit. Now, can she be run as a main DPS? Absolutely. And you would think that with her path classification being hunt. But on the other hand, she has some good support capabilities that suggest she can work in line as a sub DPS with follow up attack units like Jing Yuan, Blade, Himeko, and E4QQ. In terms of meta, my initial reaction is to slot her into A tier solely based on the nicheness of her kit. But so far, Honkai's limited 5 star characters that have been released have been very solid, generally slotting into at minimum the S tier. I believe that is inevitably where she ends up after further testing and if you have units like Jin Yuan and Blade, she may already be there for you. But if you don't already have a follow up damage dealer on your account, I think for now you have to assume she will be in the A tier for the time being. Gwenefin is a pretty straightforward unit to rank in terms of meta, slotting into B tier similar to Luka unless you are in an AoE situation, which drops her lower based on her single target damage output. Like I mentioned earlier, she is a niche 4 star unit, being categorized with units like Sampo and Luka as units you wouldn't want to run on a general team, but if you have Kafka, she can be another option in that regard. Essentially, if you have Kafka, you should definitely consider using her, especially against enemies with a fire type weakness. But overall, she's a mid unit for those looking for another potential support to add to their account. It's never too late to pick up the tab. And with that, this will end our video on who you should pull for between Jing Liu, Topaz, and Gwenefin. If you like the content, please like and subscribe. Comment down below if you are planning on pulling for Topaz or Gwenefin, or if you already pulled for the Ice Queen Jing Liu. Or are you like me and are saving up for potential reruns or the new characters in version 1.5? But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.